Welcome back or welcome if you're just joining us. It's the France Venguet debate. We're talking on the heels of 500 pages out of a 6,000 page report uh, being released. It describes uh, torture, uh, the CIA's use of torture. And according to uh, the uh, Democratic uh, led panel of the U.S. Senate, uh, how the CIA misled the White House uh, for over uh, its reaction uh, after 2011. We've been talking about it with, uh, from Washington. Alka Pradhan, uh, Counterterrorism Council for Reprieve U.S., uh, joining us uh, from the University of Indiana, former CIA officer Jean Arthur Coyle, and here in the studio, Régis Le Sommier of French News Weekly, Paris Match, and Lana Camorier, international law uh, scholar. Uh, France 24 met an Italian of Moroccan origin who insists he was in the wrong place at the wrong time, traveling to Pakistan for religious training after 2011 and getting picked up by the local authorities there. Luke Brown has the rest of the story. Running is a pleasure for Abu El Qasim Britel. It's something he couldn't do during nine years of detention in Pakistan and Morocco. Britel's ordeal started in mid-2001. He traveled to Pakistan for religious training. Seven months after the 9-11 attacks, he was picked up by the Pakistani authorities, who Britel says tortured him. They took my head and put it against my knees. Then they tied my hands behind my back. Then they hit me with a cricket bat. Alongside the Pakistani interrogation, he was grilled four times by U.S. agents. They said we want to do a deal with you. You tell us where bin Laden is, and we'll give you a car or anything. I told them I know nothing. You're wasting your time with me. In May 2002, he was taken in secret on board a U.S. registered plane from Pakistan to Morocco. That extraordinary rendition seeing Britel end up in Temara prison. Morocco denies the jail's existence, but rights groups say it serves as a secret detention center for the CIA. In Tamara, Britel was held in isolation for more than eight months, facing physical mistreatment and threats of worse. In Tamara, I didn't suffer much physical torture, apart from being slapped around a bit, but psychological torture, yes, I suffered a lot of that in Tamara. After lengthy bouts of torture and threats against his family in Morocco, Britel was forced to sign a confession linking him to terror attacks. It was the main evidence against him. Britel is convinced that Morocco jailed him to curry favor with the United States. Britel was only freed in 2011 thanks to a royal pardon from Morocco's king after years of campaigning by his family and supporters in Italy. He still finds it hard to put his ordeal behind him. What happened to me was done on purpose. That's why I can't forgive them for what they did to me. Nine years of tragedy. For what? And it's not over. I still suffer. The truth is, I feel like I'm still in jail. Abu El Qasim Britel was exonerated in Italy, where he now lives with his wife, a Muslim convert from Bergamo. His faith, reinforced during his time in jail, means he dreams of one day living in a Muslim country. Anna Kamori, uh, when people in your native Lebanon look at that report and hear uh, the, uh, the controversy out of Washington today, what's the reaction? What would the reaction be in Lebanon? I think you're talking about pretty much the same reaction as anywhere else in the world. There will be those, there will be, you know, Lebanon is very diverse uh, and has people loudly representing every political side. There will be those who find this uh, a brave move to release this report. And there will be those, of course, who will be outraged. It doesn't do good to America's image abroad. It doesn't do good to America's image abroad, so they don't take on board the point that Dianne Feinstein made, that at least we come clean. I, I take that point. I think it might not be the immediate point for many people who will see a testimony like this one. Uh, Gene Arthur Coyle, was it going overboard, it stepped up security around U.S. embassies ahead of publication? No, it's a good preventative measure. I'd, I'd like to raise for your group's consideration the reaction of this report that's going to be within the CIA by, say, mid-level officers 
who next week are told, go out and find members of ISIS and try to stop a terrorist attack by groups today. If they look at this and say, well, I'm being told to do this and it's okay now, but what happens in five or eight years when it's another political group running the place? The officers who did waterboarding were told by the White House and told by the Attorney General of the time, this is perfectly legal and okay to do. Today they're being portrayed as torturers, evil, nasty people. This is certainly going to be in the back of mind of current officers when they're told to go do something now. How do I know that politics isn't going to throw me under the train in the future? If I may respectfully disagree with this, I don't think every order a CIA officer might receive is equal to the next. Torture is one of the things most unequivocally condemned by international instruments, any number of them, by American law, by the American Constitution. Being told that this is legal, I believe any officer worth their weight would at least ask the question. And actually, we know that the White House did ask the question. G. Arthur Coyle, I'm, so, I'm sorry, but you weren't there. Absolutely. I, will, I won't contest told, that. That's true. I will. CIA officers No, but I, I have to point out, I have to point out that in the report, it says that the CIA went to great lengths because they knew that this constituted torture to go back and circumvent the thoroughly established laws on torture. And we're not just talking about international law. We're talking about U.S. law prohibiting torture. This is not some obscure prohibition. Anyone who is told that torture is okay should be questioning those orders. I do agree, however, with the point that CIA officials should not be the only ones tarred and feathered for this. This goes all the way to the top, all the way to the top of the White House. And those officials who are named in the report, including Dick Cheney, including David Addington, including Michael Hayden, should all bear responsibility for it. Gene Arthur Coyle? I'm sorry. The people at the CIA at the time were not told that it was torture, did not consider it torture. When the White House, well, they didn't. when the president, may I finish, please? When the White House, please. when the Attorney General says this is a perfectly legal measure to do, then it is not torture. Just because President That's Obama not what called it torture, uh, you can't change the law after the fact. I. Well, I'm sorry, you can't change history either. And waterboarding has always been considered torture, particularly by the United States. We have singled out other countries who have who have waterboarded prisoners. So, and, and if you actually look at the historical record, it's not that the CIA was told that water, waterboarding was suddenly legal and was suddenly not torture. And I don't just want to limit it to waterboarding because they used a lot of techniques that amounted to torture, that we all knew amounted to torture because we, the United States, have told other countries for years that they amount to torture. It was not the CIA being given permission to use these techniques. It was the CIA using the techniques and then going back and asking, in retrospect, the DOJ to cover them. That's what the I'm historical sorry, record shows. I'm sorry, you don't shows. know what you're talking about. I'm Gene, sorry, but I've reviewed the record. Gene Arthur Coyle, uh, c sorry, follow that up, please. Why, why are you saying that? Well, she's making up her own facts of history. The CIA took measures only after being told by the Attorney General's office, you can do this, you can do that, you can't do this. Uh, I don't I'm care sorry, what but that's she thinks absolutely she's bad, inaccurate. But, the report today... Well, then we'll the just agree today, to disagree. You're entitled to your no, own fantasy oh, view of history. I apologize, but this is not a question of opinion, and, and it's not a question of agreeing to disagree. It is a question of fact. And it's not just the report today that said that, but it's also public source information and interviews with former CIA and White House officials that, that completely confirms that account. So that's the way it is. If I can step in, there, there was, I mean, I remember those years, uh, especially 2003, um, I had the opportunity to follow Donald Rumsfeld back then. Back the U.S. Then. Defense Secretary. Defense time. Secretary. And I, I spent time with him. And I remember he was standing up uh, in his office, m making very clear that he, w he, was, um, he was never, never seated. And once some, some, some person told him um, the, 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 the standing up position, which was considered as a sort of 
of pressure that they, they put on, on detainees. And Rumsfeld bragged about it, saying, if I can stand up, they can, you know, if I'm working up, you know, with, with, with that standing position, then they can, they can do that. And I don't consider that, that to torture. So there was a, a mentality back then of some, some sort of bragging about this. And, and, and I don't know if Rumsfeld really meant uh, that he would to torture people, but, and, and some of his, uh, his assistants told him, Yes, sir, you may be standing up while you're working, but you don't have to. All right, a reaction on Twitter. Uh, against the background of the evil of Al-Qaeda, IS, Shabab, etc., I think this is all overblown. Hard guys require hard measures. Uh, Lana Komorye, let me ask you, because a UN human rights uh, expert um, says that uh, there should be uh, prosecution for Bush-era crimes. But... Coming back to the, to, the, to the argument we just heard, mm -hmm. is that prosecution for the CIA agents who performed uh, these enhanced interrogation techniques, or is it for the likes of Vice President Dick Cheney? I think every person responsible should be prosecuted if we are serious about reaffirming the rule of law, both within the United States and internationally. Do you take Gene Arthur Coyle's point that, that uh, today's uh, spies will think twice? Before I doing their still jobs think in, that in pursuing... torture is in a category onto its own. What Jean Arthur Coyle was, I believe, referring to earlier, however, was an interesting point, which was that the Attorney General's office in 2002 did tell, did issue memos, legal memos, saying that waterboarding was not really torture and was not really unlawful and could be justified under certain special circumstances. And perhaps that is what led officers to believe that perhaps it was lawful at the time. However, these were based on very sharp body legal reasoning. They were at the time and they are now and they've been widely discredited and they've been rebuked afterwards uh, a few years later by the Bush administration itself. So I believe that torture is in a category unto its own. I take the point that perhaps officers will think twice now, but they should think twice. America is a democracy and, uh, and affirms its role as a democracy and its particular status throughout the world because of it. Uh, Alka Pradhan, uh, on, on that point now, looking forward, that was then, this is now, and right now uh, there is the problem of tackling homegrown jihadists. We saw the shootout that took place in the parliament in Ottawa, Canada. We've seen uh, the attacks have taken place on, on this side uh, of the Atlantic. Do you think that the intelligence community has learned from its mistakes of the past? Uh, not necessarily, no. I don't think that... Torture techniques are used as widely uh, as perhaps they once were, but no, I believe that, I, I think that our civil liberties in general have been severely curtailed in the na name of national security, and unfortunately that doesn't help our national security. If we're talking about countering terrorism, you do not counter terrorism by violating the rights and the values that the terrorists are trying to destroy. We're destroying our own, the own fabric of our society by attempting to counter terrorism in this way. So no, we, you know, I, I heard the blowback that, you know, about the blowback that um, if we were to re release this report, our troops would be put in danger. You know who put the, our troops in danger in the first place? The agents and officials who committed torture. We don't commit torture at a practical level because that exposes our troops and our armed services to, to those same techniques. All right, it's not the release of information that's causing a blowback. It's the fact that we committed those crimes. And so moving forward, Yes, tor I, I don't believe torture is used as widely by the United States as it has been in the past, but I continue to represent Guantanamo Bay detainees who hold no intelligence value whatsoever 13 years later and who continue to be abused at Guantanamo. So I don't believe that we've learned all of the lessons that we need to learn from this. Uh, Gene Arthur Coyle, uh, police departments uh, have in the West for several decades uh, stopped some of their strong arm tactics because they found that it just didn't yield much good information. Is it different when you're talking about a criminal as when you're talking about uh, a jihadist? I've never seen any studies about what works by police officers. Well, you don't see, uh, you don't see torture in police stations like you once did. Well, if you're calling torture, you don't want to couple of uncontrolled policemen beat the hell out of somebody in a back room. Uh, there was a lot of stupid things done in American history in police stations. 
Uh, it comes still down to everyone talks about this illegal activity, this illegal thing. There has not been one CIA officer prosecuted, and Attorney General Eric Holder certainly spent a lot of time and effort trying to do just that. So people throw terms around pretty loosely uh, here of referring to if you want to consider waterboarding torture, fine. But saying that it was illegal, then people would be in jail by now if it had been illegal what was done under American law. And, and Gene Arthur Coyle, has the CIA gotten better at intelligence gathering uh, since 2001? You, you have a horrible dilemma of how do you penetrate and recruit someone within a small terrorist group? I do. Who is Thank you very in. much. So it's not like trying to recruit a Russian diplomat or something like that. What could I, as a CIA officer, offer a jihadist who is willing to die so that he goes and meets Allah and gets 72 virgins? I think this is why you've seen so much of the United States going to just doing drone strikes and killing people rather than trying to capture them and interrogate them. And are drones a good idea in that, in that respect? Is it not better to get human intelligence, uh, at least for the surveillance part? Well, it may be better, but as I said, it's awfully, awfully hard to penetrate in a classical human intelligence recruitment and what can I offer someone? And if the various groups say, you can't do anything other than, you know, raise your voice sternly at a terrorist you've captured, and you're not going to do waterboarding or anything else, what's the point of capturing them? You might as well have just done a strong drone strike in the first place. Lana Kamori, are drones the only game in town in some instances? Uh, this was a famous quip by Leon Panetta back then, and in a lot of ways I think it has seemed like the only game in town to American policymakers, but it's definitely not a cure-all, and they pose a whole new set of legal issues onto their own. Uh, and not least, they've killed a lot of civilians, and that has been shown, uh, especially over the past, what, five years, I believe. So no, they're not a panacea. They are certainly convenient for American armed forces, uh, in the sense that they don't put American soldiers at risk. But they're, f for now, the U.S. is one of the only nations using, using drones <clears throat> militarily. If you only start to think of every other nation doing what America is doing, you see the extent of the problem we'll have on our hands. Well, well drones were, are certainly <coughs> have been the, um, President Obama's favorite uh, toy. In, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, my opinion, uh, uh, employed um, drone strikes uh, on terrorism on terrorists. I mean, far more than President Bush. Um, actually, the, the the drone program started in 2006 under Michael Hayden, and and you know, and and and, and Bush left office in 2008. So, Obama, it was it was a favorite. Uh, the, the, both the combination of using. JSOC and, and, and drone strikes have been the favorite toys of that current administration. So. And who, who, who carries out these operations? Is it, is it the CIA or well, is it I the think, Pentagon? I mean, technically, the drone program should have been backed into the hand of the Pentagon, but I think they're still uh, in the hand of the CIA. I'm not sure about that, but I think the CIA still holds uh, on the drone strikes very much. I believe it's mixed responsibility for those. It's both the CIA and the DOD, and this obviously poses questions in terms of legal responsibility. Who is yeah. going to be responsible for it? Uh, CIA officers are not accountable the way soldiers are. Yeah. Gene Arthur Coyle? Well, and this, this is one thing. It is. The, uh, the military runs some drones. The CIA runs some drones. I personally would like to see the CIA get completely out of the drones. This is why you have a Pentagon. Yeah. If you're going to be flying something over and killing people, this is what the U.S. military is supposed to be doing, not the CIA. Well, no, that's absolutely. the whole debate about the militarization of the CIA, which happened a few years ago, and it's still going on. And, Regis, when you compare with other intelligence agencies, how are they, are they handling... Um, Detainees the same way? Well, also just taking on... Um, uh, getting information on who the enemy is with uh, with jihadist militants the same way. Well, the French and the British have certainly different methods. Uh, the British like likes to um, go very very far in observing, picking information, and using human intel. Uh, the French have been good at uh, 
um, you know, going after the sales, and we have experience for, that backs far, far before 9-11, uh, with uh, uh, current uh, terrorist strikes on our soil in the, in the 90s, especially uh, with the G GIA, the, 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 the uh, Algerian-born terrorist group. And, and we've had, um, yeah, I, I think uh, the, the thing with all this basically lies to what happened in 9-11, and I think the U.S. was very much caught by surprise back then. They had not much intel on who were their enemy back then, they, they, they found themselves really unprepared, and I think they had to catch up, and this, you know, this probably pushed the Bush administration to um, uh, such extent that, you know, to actually slip away from American values um, and, and conduct this uh, um, um, anti-terror program that amounts to torture in many, many, many times. But I'd like to, uh, if, you, if I may, finish on a, a lighter note. I just read um, uh, a comment from uh, the New Yorker Andy Borowitz, who says, Bush blasted the CIA torture report without reading it. So I guess he's still strongly pro-talk torture and anti-reading. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. New, New Yorker satirist Andy Borowitz. I want to thank you, Regis Samier, Lana Camorier. I want to thank Gene Arthur Coyle for being with us uh, from Bloomington, Indiana and uh, Alka Pradhan, who is with us from uh, Washington. But stay with us because our Media Watch segment is next. All right, we've got a light note there from Regis Le Sommier and Andy Borowitz's a statement in the New Yorker. James Creedon is with us. It's our Media Watch segment. That's right. It, it must be said most of the comments aren't that light. It is a pretty, pretty heavy topic. And just to give you a sense, uh, Francois, of how uh, this is playing out on social media, you, uh, well, a lot of the media websites, first of all, are trying to sum it up in key points, seven key points for the New York Times, 20 uh, for the Washington Post. And uh, you are seeing not an effective means of acquiring intelligence rested on uh, inaccurate claims of their uh, effectiveness. Etc. So, uh, what else do we have? Waterboarding, near drowning, rectal feeding, all of these awful terms mm -hmm. and details coming up in, in tweets. And the fact, of course, that Paul, Colin Powell was kept in the dark, it appears, by... The then U.S. Secretary of State. Oh, that's right, by the White House. So, they're, they're the details coming out. Um, a, a lot of emphasis being placed uh, by Senator Dianne Feinstein and indeed by Obama on values, restoring values, this attempt at clarity and transparency in a bid uh, to, to restore values. You can see uh, many uh, media also picking up on Obama's uh, comments regarding that. Uh, others saying that terrorists won in the name of security. We dismantled our ideals and destroyed everything we wanted to respect. So in other words, in the fight against terror. That is a, that is a remark a lot of people have when they walk into right. airports and they have right. to go through that long check-in process. They say the terrorists won. Right, in, 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 in increasing security uh, to that degree. Uh, meanwhile, a lot of emphasis being placed uh, by the Republicans on uh, the fact that these methods were effective from their point of view. They did uh, help in capturing terrorists. And you can see a lot of people on social media uh, echoing uh, those, uh, those thoughts, uh, saying, well, if you're in the field against your enemy, you've got to do what you've got to do. Uh, what I find disturbing in, in the report, says another comment, is that people are surprised. Isn't this what state agencies do should we be so naive as to be surprised by the details the cia lied about torture where the world doesn't even make sense anymore and for me that's a pretty ironic uh yes. tweet uh elsewhere the feinstein report relies a lot on what terrorists say happened to them so some people no sounding a note of caution saying well where are the details of this report coming from well actually some of the the, the details are coming from a, a member of the cia himself who was the only person to be jailed over the torture program Thus far, uh, that is uh, John Kiriakou. So uh, some people making that comment as well, that perhaps, uh, you know, legal proceedings uh, should come out of this and that he shouldn't be the only one to have been sanctioned. Uh, other, other remarks as well, uh, pointing to the fact that at least this is uh, an operation of transparency, an operation that you might not see in other uh, states with a pretty uh, heavy-handed um, techniques such as Russia, um, so some comments uh, in that regard, and echoing some of the comments that were made by the panel earlier about um, about the drone program. Uh, this is an article in the Washington Post by Michael Gerson. Now, what he is saying is that it's exceptionally reckless behaviour by Congress to come out 
with a report like this when uh, Americans are still engaged in a war. And uh, he points out in this article from his point of view that you have um, harsh interrogation techniques and you have the drone program. And in one, you have, uh, uh, you have uh, uh, basically uh, people being interrogated in a very harsh way and in other mm. uh, limbs are being blown apart and collateral damage, so to speak. In other words, uh, people who weren't even targeted being killed by drone strikes. So which is worse? You could, you could argue that one is as bad as the other. Uh, and that simply one is the favoured approach by Barack Obama at the moment. So all of this discourse about uh, transparency and uh, restoring values, well, uh, techniques are currently being used that uh, are still, um, I suppose, morally um, suspect. And I think that's the point that he's making in this in this piece. All right. Well, and, and certainly the point that was made earlier by Lana, which is that uh, uh, playing uh, uh, to uh, to the terrorist hand, if you uh, if you don't take the moral high ground. Right, right. So a lot of discussion um, on all those points online. Okay. James Creedon, I want to thank you. I want to thank our panel once again. Thank you for joining us here in the France 24 debate.